Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you all here. We're just going to give it a few minutes for everyone to trickle in. So while we wait, I'm so curious, where are you all tuning in from? Leave a comment in the chat box. Let me know. And also make sure to change the settings where it says two in the chat box to panelists and attendees. That way I can see everything that you are typing. So please feel free. Go ahead. Oh, amazing. We've got Santa Fe, New Mexico, Los Angeles, California. Amazing. That's where I'm from. We've got New Jersey, New York, Bay Area. Amazing. Love that. So exciting. Brooklyn, Iowa. Oh my gosh, it's going so fast. I can't even keep up. Philadelphia, Toronto, Canada, Orange County, Fargo, Salt Lake, Honolulu. That is amazing. Connecticut, Colorado, Memphis. Hi from DC, Texas. Oh, this is so exciting, you guys. Jersey, San Bernardino, Moreno Valley, New Jersey. Ooh, Portugal, Roanoke. That's so cool, Portugal. I would love to go to Portugal. Long Beach. We've got a lot of California in the house. <laughs> that is amazing. Fresno, hello. We've got uh, Pune, is that how you say that? Austin, amazing. Are you guys excited? I'm so excited. There's going to be a Q&A at the end, just FYI. So please save all of your questions for the end. We will be having a Q&A session. And then just a reminder, there is going to be a survey at the end. So there will be a link in the chat pod. Please fill that out. It's going to be so helpful for me in Adobe. It'll basically let us know if you want to see more things like this, which is super helpful. So please, please check that out at the end. Um, all the Texas people, I hope you're safe and staying warm. I totally agree. I really hope that you're all staying safe. I actually lost electricity a few weeks ago, so I know what that's like. It's a very scary. Please stay safe. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. We've got India. All right, we're just going to give it a little bit longer. We're going to let people keep trickling in, and we will start very soon. Oh, another reminder, we've got Emily from Adobe in the chat pod. So she will be answering any questions that are more like, you know, Adobe related. So keep an eye out for Emily. We've got Jacksonville. For everybody who is just now tuning in, please leave a comment in the chat pod. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Minneapolis, Los Angeles, Dallas, New York, LA. Ooh, Joshua Tree, I love Joshua Tree. Uh, let's see, Wales, I'm wondering if this is actually live. Yes, this is actually live. I'm right here, it is live, it's me. We're doing this live. We've got Dallas, Kansas, Columbus, Ohio, London. Hello, hello from Seattle, Washington, Kentucky, Brittany, Colorado Springs. <laughs> Keegan, it's all good. Um, hi, Sophie. Oh, hi, I'm Sophie from Belgium. Hello, Sophie. Belgium, that is amazing. We've got so many amazing locations here. That's so cool. All right, so we'll just give this one more minute. We'll let people keep trickling in. Again, for anybody who is new, I'm just gonna read this. We have Emily from Adobe in the chat pod. So she will be helping answering questions. There is going to be a Q&A at the end. So please save all of your questions for the end. We will be answering those at the end. And there's also going to be a survey at the end the link will be in the chat pod. This is really gonna help me and Adobe to know if you basically wanna see more events like this. So definitely check that out at the end. All right, we've got Santa Fe. Hello, Chris from Fort Lee, New Jersey. We've got Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, Corey from Orlando, Florida. Hello from New York. Hello, hello everyone. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, hello, Victoria, BC, San Francisco. Damien from Texas in the big freeze. I really hope you're staying safe and warm. Um, where are you from? I am from LA. Hi everyone, Izzy from LA. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick. And there we go, all right. So hello everyone, welcome to Rush Social Hour. My name is Shireen and today's topic is on trend, how to create beauty and lifestyle content for TikTok. So, a little bit about me. My name is Shireen, as I mentioned. It is so nice to meet you and I'm so excited that you are all here. 
I am a Los Angeles-based content creator with a drive for storytelling through content that is informative and empowering. And I have a passion for all things beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and creative. I have been on YouTube since 2008. I graduated with a BA in cinema and television arts with an emphasis in screenwriting and a minor in business management. After I graduated, I went on to work for Awesomeness TV and I was a production assistant and I was able to work on Third Wheel, which is a YouTube web series. If you're interested, you can go on YouTube and check that out. Um, so now I have a production company, it's called Ziva Studios and we are a production company for product photography and videography for beauty brands. So very exciting things. So um, today you'll be learning how to edit for TikTok. And I will be showing you how to edit in Premiere Rush and Premiere Pro. So Premiere Rush is perfect for quick edits and creators on the go. I love using it all the time for just really quick edits. And Premiere Pro is amazing for more precise editing and fun effects. Not to say Premiere Rush doesn't also have fun effects. It totally does, and we'll dive into that. But Premiere Pro is better for more advanced things, more precision, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So the benefits of editing in Premiere are that it's easier to edit, you have more creative control, there are free motion graphic templates, which is huge, it's such a game changer, such a nice benefit to have, and there's no watermark best of all, so you can repurpose your content across social platforms. The reason why I really love using Premiere Rush and Premiere Pro instead of editing in TikTok is because editing in TikTok, for me at least, it's limiting. I feel like I can't do as much as I want to do, nor can I do it as easily as I can in Rush or Pro. So now I wanna direct your attention to this little graphic on the side of the screen. Do you see how there's two of me in one shot? So I'm gonna be teaching you how to do that. I don't have a twin, but I do have editing skills and you will too very shortly. So in today's lesson, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a very oddly satisfying product shot. Um, it'll be just very like, you know, slow motion. We'll dive into that. Then we're gonna be covering transitions. So I'm gonna be going from this shot of me with no makeup into full makeup, but we're gonna be doing it in a very uncreative way. And then we're gonna be doing that clone shot. So as you can see, the first shot of me, it's just me. And then there's gonna be a second shot of my clone and they're gonna be trimmed together. And then for this last one, I'm gonna be showing you how to change the color of literally anything in Premiere Pro. So for that full shot, I'm just wearing one jacket, but I'm gonna show you how to change the color of it and you can change it to the beat and stuff like that. It'll be so much fun. So before we get into this, I just want to remind you that you don't need the latest camera and filming equipment. Use what you have. Like truly, you don't need to go out and buy all this fancy gear and lighting and all of that. There are free options. I mean, feel free to use your camera and all that if you have it, but you can also get by without it. So for this first one, for the satisfying product shots, here is the behind the scenes. So I have natural lighting, AKA the sun, just peeking in through my window. And then I use a black shirt as a backdrop. So you can see the shirt is tucked into my dresser and that's acting as my backdrop stand, right? So then the product, I have it leveled up on this glass and this acrylic tray just to get it high enough so that it'll be in that stream of light and getting lit. So in this little tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the camera in Rush, how to slow down footage, how to use a speed ramp, color correction, and color grading. So let's go ahead and jump into Rush. All right, so I'm actually gonna show you how to start a uh, project from the beginning, but before we do that, let's just show you what the final result is gonna be like. So as you see, we have this nice, beautiful drip going on. It's really satisfying. Shots like these are some of my favorites. So let's go back to home. And then at the bottom here, we're gonna press this plus icon and then add media. And then I'm gonna go into my albums because I just, everything organized, I find that this helps me a lot. And we're just gonna go here. We're gonna select this clip and then let's give it a name. Let's do satisfying, uh, not satisfying. There we go, uh, product shot, then return. And then at the bottom left, do you see where it says sync with CC? This is a really cool feature because it allows you to sync the project to your computer. So if you open up Rush on your computer, you can take whatever edits you've done on your phone and then continue editing them 
on your computer. So super helpful. I'm not gonna do that today, but just throwing it out there. If you wanna do it, it's super helpful. So we'll press create, and this is going to create our new project. So now from here, you'll see that we have this clip. Uh, what we need to do first is to trim it down because I don't want my finger and all of that in there. So let's go over here. I'm just gonna slide over. Let's see, mm, right around there-ish. Let's see, right there. So now we need to cut the clip. So I'm gonna slide over in the bottom and you see that scissors icon? That is going to be your cut. So we're gonna cut that. And then I'm going to press this first clip and just press delete to get rid of it. So now to expand and basically zoom in on the timeline, I'm gonna take my two fingers and just go like this. And that's going to expand our uh, clip. So this will just make it easier to scrub through. I love doing that. It's just easier than having it all bunched up in a little thing, you know? So now we're gonna go to this end part and we're gonna figure out where we wanna cut this end point. So let's see where it stops dripping. Okay, you see how that drop kind of flies away? I don't want that in the shot. So we're gonna go to this last drop right before that, which is around right there. So we're gonna press scissors again and then trash can to delete. And now we're left with this clip. So you'll see if I play this, it's all in normal speed, right? Like it's going by really quick. We wanna slow that down. So how do we do that? Very easy. We're gonna go over to speed. So I'm gonna press that. And right now the range speed is at 100%. So something else I do wanna mention is that this shot was actually filmed at 60 frames per second. So normally shots are filmed at 24 frames per second, that's standard. And that's just more of like a cinematic shot. It's very standard in Hollywood. But if you want something to be slowed down and very smooth and not choppy when you slow it down, if you film it in 60 frames per second, it'll allow you to take it down to like 40%, 50%, and you'll still have really smooth playback. And I'll show you, you can actually film in 60 frames per second within Rush. So let me just do this real quick and then I'll show you how to do that. So in range speed, we're gonna press this, press on 100, and we'll just change this to 40%. So now when we play it through, you'll see it's really smooth and satisfying, right? It's really that easy. <laughs> it looks so incredible. So you can also add a speed ramp if you want. And how you can do this is by going over to ramp and just check that on. So now our ramp is five seconds and you see those little blue icons. You can drag those in. So kind of like that. And we'll trim in this last one. So these are basically your starting and end points for the ramp. So basically what that means is at the beginning, your clip is gonna be normal speed and then it'll ramp into being 40% slowed down and then ramp back into being full speed. So let's give that a look and you can see what that looks like. So there we go, slowed down and then back into normal speed. Um, for this clip, I don't really wanna do that. So I'm just gonna press the back icon. We're just gonna leave the whole thing at 40% and then let's just get rid of that ramp. So let me show you how you can film in 60 frames per second in Rush. So over here, where that plus icon is at, that blue one, we're gonna press that, press capture. So now <laughs> you just see my keyboard right here. Basically in the bottom right, you see where it says 1080p, 24 frames per second. You can press that and then change your frame rate. How cool is that? So if you go to 60 frames per second, you can shoot in 60 frames per second directly in Rush and then slow it down using that method that I just showed you. And then you can also shoot in 4K if you want. You have so many options. So I'm just gonna exit out of that real quick. We're gonna go back to this and let's add some color. So we're gonna go over to color. And then there are all these presets in here for color grading, which makes it so easy to just quickly color your clips. So let's just go through them. Let's see which one we like best for this one. Uh, so there's Fuji, Bleach, Kodak, that looks nice. Film a little bit too faded for this. Cinematic, oh, way too dark. Let's stick with Kodak. And then we'll bring down the intensity. Let's do maybe, mm, I don't know, around here to start with like 47-ish. And then we can go into color correction. So let's bump up the exposure. You see how that instantly just brightened up the clip? Boom, instant like production value just skyrocketed. How, how cool. And then we're going to up the contrast a little bit. And then let's see, do we need to do anything else? Let's, uh, let's do vibrance. Um, a difference between vibrance and saturation, just in case you're not aware, saturation 
will change the saturation, if you will, or the intensity of all the colors across the board. Whereas vibrance will change only those colors that aren't already intense to begin with. So basically um, a great way to think about this is a shot with a person in it, right? So if you up the saturation, your skin tone may change and become too orange. But if you just up the vibrance, it already knows that your skin tone is already properly accounted for and it won't basically turn you into, into an Oompa Loompa. Let me know if that makes sense. <laughs> so we're just gonna stick with vibrance. And then you have all these other options, but I don't think we need those. So I'm just gonna leave this as is. And let's give this a look. Oh, so beautiful. Isn't that satisfying? Like I love these shots so much. Amazing. All right, so let's move on into the next tutorial. So this one is really fun. We're gonna be going into transitions. And before we do that, I wanna share with you how I edit to TikTok sounds. So basically whenever I find a sound on TikTok that I like and I wanna edit to, I will basically press that little uh, arrow icon and then save the video to my phone. And then from there, I can import that into either Premiere Rush or airdrop it to my computer so I can take it into um, Premiere Pro. And then I'll extract the audio and edit to that. I'll show you how I do that. But then when I go back to upload that video to TikTok, here are my volume settings. I have the original sound set to 100 and then the added sound at zero. So basically what that means is that our sound that we edited to is going to be the only audio that you hear, but you can still have the video on TikTok show that sound that you edited to, like it'll pop up at that bottom part of uh, TikTok. Like you see where it says tasty carrots by Shio, like that part will still show up on your video, which is helpful for TikTok because it'll pop you up in that little feed section for the song. So, Moving on into behind the scenes. Here's my setup, nothing fancy, it's just in my bedroom. And I have a white poster board as a backdrop. So this is something I got from Target, it's really cheap. You can also use uh, basically anything you have around the house, bed sheets, wrapping paper, get creative with it. And then I have two soft boxes angled in at 45 degrees. So this is gonna be really flattering, especially for beauty. And you can also set these lights up to be pointing down at you from above and angled in 45 degrees. That's also very flattering for beauty. So where that stool is at is where I'm gonna be sitting or I was sitting. And right behind me is that backdrop. Typically, you wanna have six feet of space between your lights and your subject, so yourself, or, uh, and yourself and your background. Now, since I don't have the space for that, it's really cramped, I didn't do that. And if you don't have the space for that, it's totally, you can still make it work. But if you do have the space to just lay everything out, have them all social distance, if you will, I highly recommend having a light, a separate light, a third one, to light up your backdrop. This is gonna up your production value and just make everything look so much better. So with that backlight, you can set that up on the floor and just point up at your backdrop. This is something a lot of beauty YouTubers do, so just FYI, wanted to share. So in this tutorial, you'll be learning how to separate audio from a clip and how to cut two clips together on the beat for a seamless transition. And let's go back into Rush. So we're gonna go over here and then let me pull up the video. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the final version and then we'll show you how to edit. So let's go. Cute, right? So let's go back. Let's create a new project. Oops, sorry, getting a call. Get rid of that. Um, we're gonna add media. We're gonna go back to albums, and then we're gonna go to Adobe at the bottom. Sorry, my phone's a little bit slow today. <laughs> And then we're gonna press these two clips. So this one, this one. And fun fact, whatever order that you select for these clips, like one, two, that's the same order that they're gonna be imported into your timeline. So let's give this a name. We'll just call it makeup. 
transition and press create. All right, so here are the two clips. And something that's really important for these transitions is that you want to make sure that you're fully performing the action for the transition. So basically what I mean by this is that for this one, you know how I'm sneezing, you wanna make sure that for both versions, the before and after clips that you're gonna be cutting together, you do the full like achu movement. Um, the reason why you wanna do this is because when you go to cut these clips together, you can cut exactly on that like achu part right there and it'll just look a lot more seamless when you go to edit. So I'll play these through and I'll let you see what I mean. So I go achu, then achu, and then what we wanna do now is cut these together. So let's slide over and we're gonna find that point like right there the end or like the height of the achu. <laughs> and then we're going to cut right here, press delete. And then we're gonna go back, find that achu right there and then cut that. And then we're going to expand our timeline again. It'll just make it easier to select that clip. So now we're gonna delete that. And when we play this back, it'll just go like achu, right? Super seamless. So now we need to cut the music. So how do we do that? We're going to go back and we're going to go to media and we're going to go and find that video that I downloaded with the audio. So right over here, this one, I'm going to press add. Okay. So right now the audio is basically baked into the video, right? We want to separate that. So we get just the audio. So to do that, you're going to press and hold on the clip and just press separate audio. Boom, that's it. So now we're going to just tighten this up a little bit so I can drag this over. So to do that, you're gonna press and hold on the audio and then drag it over to your clips. And then we're going to select that video. We don't want that, so we're just gonna delete that. And now let's go ahead and expand again. And then at the beginning, I do want to trim the audio a little bit and I'll show you why. So we're like, where those beats are, where it's like, boom, 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 at you. I did these movements, basically time to that. So I wanna cut to that. So let's see. Around right here, we're gonna trim the audio. So we're gonna select the audio and then press cut, delete. And then we're gonna press and hold and then drag this over to the beginning. Let's see if that worked out. Perfect. All right, amazing. So now we also want to trim down the end. You see how it just kind of drags on a little bit too long? You're going to press and hold at the end of this music audio section and just drag that in right until the end of your clip. So now when we play back, this should be good to go. Let's take a look. <laughs> Amazing. Isn't that so easy, you guys? Like there's all these cool little things that you can do in um, Premiere Rush. How did you extract the audio again? Let me show you. So um, we're just gonna import that video again and I will show you how to do that. So we added the video and then you're going to press and hold on the video and then separate audio. And that will give you a separate video and audio section. And then you can just delete the video and keep the audio. Let me know if that helps. Amazing, you're welcome. So let's move right along. We're gonna go back over here. So this next one is gonna be about how to clone yourself. So this one, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Premiere Rush and Premiere Pro. So on the left, you can see that the first version of this shot, I was wearing a black shirt my hair was kind of blending into my shirt. You couldn't really tell that there's any sort of separation going on there. And then at the bottom, we have this white blanket and your eyes are immediately going to there because your eyes go to the brightest part of a shot first. So in the second version, we made some changes. You wanna choose colors that help your subject stand out from the background. So I'm wearing red. You can tell that my hair is there, you know, it's not hiding. It also helps me to separate from all my clothes in the background. I pop more. And then at the bottom, 
I added this pink jacket to kind of drape across my bed. That way it creates a little bit of separation and it's not just all bright and white. Your eyes won't immediately go there. If anything, your eyes will immediately go to kind of like the white purse and like that shelf in the back, which is totally fine because you want to help direct your audience's eyes to wherever the action and your subject is at. So that way, when we go back there, like, you know, okay, this is where our action is happening. So let's go a little bit more in depth into the behind the scenes. So again, I have these two soft boxes angled in at 45 degrees, super flattering light. And then I actually put tape on the floor to tape where my standing location was gonna be at. Fun fact, this is something that they do on Hollywood sets. So try it out, it makes it really helpful. Um, basically, since I had my camera set to manual focus, this helped me lock in the exact position that I needed to be at in order to be in focus. If you're filming this on your phone, it'll be a lot easier. You don't have to deal with manual focus and all of that. The iPhone's pretty good at focusing on you. But if you're shooting on like a DSLR or anything like that, definitely go the manual focus route. You're gonna need to, otherwise you will be out of focus. Or I mean, it's very likely that you will be out of focus. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to overlay two clips, how to use the crop effect, how to add captions and how to use a mask. So let's jump back into Premiere Rush and we'll do that. So let me drag this over a little bit more. There we go. All right. So we're gonna go and create a new project again. But before we do that, let me show you actual, actually the uh, final video. No, no, no. Can you please pick it up? I have nothing to wear. You have a whole closet it with me. Nothing. Kids wear. Anything. I have nothing to you. wear. Thank you with you. No. Okay. Do you see how it kind of cut the dress at the end right there? That's the reason why we need to go into Premiere uh, Pro, but we'll get into that in a bit. Let me just show you how to cut these two together in Rush. So we're going to press the plus icon and then add media again, go to albums, and then we're going to go down and pick the clips. So for this one, we're going to select this red outfit first and then the white one second. Let's call this outfit train, or actually outfit clone, um, and then create. All right, so now we want to stack these clips on top of each other. So we're gonna select that second one just by pressing on it, and then you're gonna, gonna, then you're gonna press, hold, drag it above your clip, and then just drop it. And then from there, you can just, do the same thing, drag it over a little bit more. And then we're gonna take our cursor back over here. And to help us edit better, we're gonna trim this up a little bit. So we're gonna go to transform, slide on over, and then let's crop from the left. So we'll go in about, hmm, about there. And just like that, you have a clone. Isn't that so cool? So if your clip, your clone clip is a little bit less complicated than mine. There's no clothes being tossed around everywhere. You can do this entirely in Premiere Rush. So you don't need to do like all that extra editing. Just set up a simple shot. Make sure that you're not um, like crossing this imaginary line, if you will. And you can have a clone really easily. So let's see if this makes sense for the audio. No, no, no. Can you please? I have nothing to wear. You have a whole closet. Nothing to wear. Anything. I have nothing to wear. Thank you with you. No. Okay, yeah, that seems to work pretty well. You can make fine tune adjustments if you wanted to, like drag this over a little bit. Um, let's see, let's play the end. You. No. Okay, yeah. So. Going back to what I was talking about with this, basically what you wanna do is add a mask and it's really easy. I'll show you how to do it in pro. But one more thing before we actually do that, I wanna show you how to add captions. And this is gonna be really helpful for doing like closed captioning. It's really great to do that on TikTok. It helps 
viewers. I love doing it. So let's do that. We're going to go over to graphics at this bottom part. We're just going to press that, press add graphic. And then from here, you'll see you have so many options. There's titles. You can just scrub through them, pick whatever you want. There's transition graphics, which are really cool. There's a bunch of overlays. Like there's so many amazing options and these are all free, which is incredible. So we're gonna go up to titles. We're just gonna pick that first one. So I'm gonna select that and then press add. So now you see we have this graphic added to our top of our timeline. So it's above our clips, which means you can see it. So we're going to press a uh, double, double click on where it says title and then you can edit that. So let's say we wanna add subtitles, right? Uh, actually, let me see, what did I say here? Let's just do pick anything, just for the sake of this tutorial. So we're gonna press here and then we're gonna do pick anything. And then we'll press a check mark and then we're gonna get rid of that subtitle. So I'm just gonna double press to select that and then just get rid of that, press the check mark. And now we just have it saying pick anything. So from here, you can change your font if you want. There's so many options. Um, fun fact, let me put you on a very fun font. This is called Montserrat. It's what I love using. It's a really nice one. And we can change the font size if we wanted to. We can make it bigger, smaller. I think around there is fine. And then you can also change the character spacing, line spacing, all these things. So much fun. You can also change the color if you wanted to. You can add an outline. This could also make it easier to read. So let's add an outline for fun. Let's do, um, what color do we want? Let's do purple. Let's see. And then we'll change the outline size a little bit. Oh, you know what? You have to select it first. I do this all the time and I always forget. So you're going to go back to your font, make sure that you have it selected by just highlighting it. And then we're going to press the check mark. Now we're going to go back to outline. We're going to add an outline. We're going to change the color, press done. Now we can change the outline size. So there we go. Let's see, maybe like a 30. And then there you go. So now let's actually change the positioning of this. I'm going to change it to go to the top. So we're going to go here, press transform. And then we are going to change the position. So we'll just drag this up, maybe like right there. Seems like a good spot. You can read it legibly. And let's just give that a look. So let's say you want to cut this, right? Because you don't want it to drag on for longer than that. The same way that you cut your clips, you're just going to press that cut icon and delete. And you just have it playing in that one section. So then from there, Let's say you want to duplicate that. You're going to press and hold on it and then press duplicate. And then you can just drag and drop that to wherever you want, basically. Say you want to go like to the next, um, the next sentence that you want to add captions for. That's an easy way to do it. And you can just double press on where it says pick anything. And then you'll change this to, let's just put caption for fun. <laughs> And you just, you can keep doing that. It's a really easy way to add captions. So let's hop on over to, oh, hold on. We got a question. Can you move the text lower to the bottom third? Yes, you can. Let me show you how. So we can go back to transform and we're just going to change the vertical position and we can change the horizontal position. And now you have a nice lower third. All right, so let's jump over into Premiere. And we're basically going to be doing this again. I'll show you how to do the mask in Premiere and the crop and all of that. So first, as you can see, this is what it looks like no. right now. No, no. Can you please take them out? I don't know. You see how like you can't really tell there's two of me right now. So we're going to select this top clip right here. This is the clip of me in white. So from here, we're going to go to the effects panel and you're going to search for crop. So under transform, you're going to select crop and then you're going to drag and drop this onto your clip. So now from here, 
let's go to effect controls. And then for this shot on, um, on my DSLR, I have to crop from the bottom because it was tilted vertically. So we're gonna do that. And there we go. So something around there looks good to me. Let's just give that a watch to make sure it's okay. Mm, actually, let's move it over a little bit more because you can see like that part right here, it kind of cut that weirdly. So let's just move that over a little bit. Uh, right about there. Let's look at that. Mm, we'll cut it a little bit more. Right about there. No. Okay, you can fine tune this as much as you want. I don't want to waste time, but let me show you how to mask this. So at the end, right after I walk out, right about here, you'll see that I'm going to be throwing this outfit. And right now, since we have that crop effect on, it's basically cutting right there. And it looks a little bit weird, right? So we need to fix that. So to fix that, we're going to add a mask. So we're going to go to this point right before it starts cutting it off. So right about here. Let's go to opacity. And then you see this like pen icon. You're going to press that. And then you're going to start drawing a mask. So for this, we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see better. And I'm gonna actually go to 75%. We're gonna start masking around the bed, right around here. I'm just doing a rough one. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always go back and tweak this. And then we're gonna go right there. And now we have a mask. So you wanna add a keyframe for this to the mask. To do that, you're gonna press this little like stopwatch icon. So just like that, you'll see right there, we created a keyframe. A keyframe will basically lock in your parameters for that specific moment in time. And it's basically indicating a start and end point. So right now we are telling Premiere, we want this mask to start at this position with those points that we just put. So from here, we're gonna be adjusting our points. So we're going to tab over one frame and I'm just doing that with my right arrow icon. And we're going to go one more. And let's start pulling down that mask. So we're going to go over here to mask one. And then we're going to drag down this point to right down here, just to give that dress enough space to fall into frame. And then we're going to tab forward. We're going to keep going. It's good. It's good. And then around here, let's start taking it down again. So around right there and right there. And then we'll keep tabbing forward. You'll see it's kind of like pulling into that dress a little bit, that mask. So we're just gonna take it down a little bit more. And, oop, not that, command Z, change that. And then we're gonna tab forward again. And then from here, you can keep taking it down so let's zoom into let's do like 150 so we can see what we're doing better. <laughs> we're going to take this down and just keep adjusting. Of course, you can take your time with this, make fine tune adjustments. And then we'll tab over one more. So actually right here, we're going to add another keyframe for the opacity. So for here, we're going to just add a keyframe for 100%. That means that mask is fully in effect. We're going to tab over one more and then change the opacity to zero. So that means we are getting rid of that mask. So as you can see, the bed comes back into frame. And now when we give it a look, it'll look something like this. No. And you see that just looks a lot more smooth and natural, right? So within that mask, you can also change different options. Like you can feather it out if you wanted to. And let me show you what that looks like. So the feathering, it's basically expanding the edge around the mask. So it won't be as harsh and precise. It'll be more blended out. So you see those dotted lines? 
that's where the feathering will be taking place. And then the expansion, if we adjust this, this basically expands the selection of your mask. So you see where that, where that solid line is at? That's basically expanding your mask. So we're just gonna do uh, Command C, we're just gonna get rid of that. And I already have a fully edited version of this. I'll just play that for you and you can see what the final version looks like. No, no, no. Can you please take an outfit? I have nothing to wear. You have a whole closet to get with me. Nothing. I have nothing to wear. I came with you. No. No. Oh, I came with you. No. See, like the end just looks so smooth. It all looks so nice. I love being able to make these little fine tuned edits in Premiere Pro. So you can also add graphics in here, like the titles and all of that. So to do that, you can go over to graphics and then you can, you see how like on the side, there's all these different options. Just like in Premiere Rush, you can drag and drop these in. Or if you want, you can press this text icon right here. So we're gonna press this and then we'll press the type so here we can just type in caption. And then I already have some of these settings checked. So you'll see like my fill is set to black. That means the caption, like the writing will be in black. My background is set to white. The opacity is, is at 75%. So you can still see a little bit of the background, but let's say you wanna make it fully white. So you'll just drag that up to 100%. Now it's fully white, you can't see the background. And then underneath that is basically the padding around that text box. So right now it's set to 20. If we took this down to zero, you'll see it's really tight. It looks a little bit tight, odd. So I like setting this to usually around like 20. Of course you can play with it. You can make it even more if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna press command C to get rid of that. And then you can, again, change the font and all of that right here if you wanted to. So let's just change this real quick. Hello. Let's uh, make sure that this is selected. And then, hello, do you wanna work? Not today? Okay, whatever, it's fine. You get the point. You can change everything right there. And then we'll just drag and drop this over. So something that I like to do when adding graphics like this, or text rather, is to drag this out across the entire length of the video where I want the, um, the text to be at. And then I'll just play this through and make cuts where the caption will change every time. So I'll show you what I mean. No, no, no. So let's say right there, I wanna put no, no, no for the text. So I'm just going to press C to bring up the blade tool. We'll make a cut right there. I'm gonna press V so that I can select this clip. And then up here, we'll just go and we'll press and we'll type no, no, no. And then if you want, we'll just select all of this and you can actually change the positioning. So let's say you want it to have it like fully centered for whatever reason, you can do these um, align and transform options. You can press those so you can align them vertically or horizontally, but let's say you wanna bring it back up. You can just go right here and make fine tune adjustments. So we'll just bring that back up right there. And then let's just keep playing through. No, no. Can you please pick an outfit? So can you please pick an outfit? We'll cut right there. And I then we're late. I mean, this one gets a little bit tricky because there's two people talking over each other. I just figured that's how twins would act, you know? So in this case, I would add two layers of captions right on top of each other. So let's say something like, we'll just press this. I'm gonna press and hold option and then press the clip and drag it up. That'll duplicate it for us. And then from here, we can just bring this up a little bit and you can change the color if you wanted to. So let's press the caption. We'll change the background to, I don't know, let's do red for fun. And that way you can tell it's a different person talking. So that's how you do that. Very fun, very exciting. Let's move on to the next tutorial. All right. So we'll bring this over. Next one is how to change colors in Premiere Pro. So for this shot, it was shot during golden hour. This is a very flattering type of lighting. It's basically during sunset. You can also catch it during sunrise. This is just gonna give you really soft, golden, nice lighting. Highly recommend it, try it out. 
And as I mentioned, for this whole shoot, I just used one jacket. That's all I was wearing the whole time, but I changed the color of it through editing. So for this one, you're going to be learning how to use the change the color effect and how to add keyframes. So let's go back over to Premiere and let's go into this project. So let me go back over here and we'll do this one. So let me just play you the final version. So you'll see to the beat basically to my snaps, we're changing the color. So let's go and pick the change the color effect. So up in effects, you're gonna type in change and then you'll see change the color pops up under this color correction area. So we're gonna press this and then drag and drop it onto our clip. So now when we go back to the effect controls, you'll see right here where it says like from and to, you can change the color. So let's go ahead and create markers. This is gonna help us know when we need to be changing that color. So to add markers, all you're gonna do is press M. So I'm just gonna go to the start of this clip and just press and we're gonna press the space bar to play this clip. And then I'm gonna press M every time I snap my fingers. Let's go. M, M, M. Okay, so that'll be the last one. So now we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna align our little cursor with the marker. And I'm actually gonna tab back one frame. So I'm gonna use the left, um, the left key on my uh, keyboard. And from here, we want to, in the from section, pick the eyedropper tool. And then, why is this not working? There we go. Double click on the color, press the uh, eyedropper tool. And then we're gonna select the color of my jacket and then we'll press okay. So you'll see that created a keyframe right there for from. And then we're gonna do the same thing for two. This, this is basically just gonna keep that original color as our base color. So we're gonna do the same thing for two. We're gonna press here to create a keyframe. And then we will go here and I'm just gonna copy and paste this hex code. So command C, go here and command V. All right, now we're gonna tab over one frame. So from here, we're gonna change the two to literally any color. So let's just go to purple for fun. Boom, purple coat, isn't that so fun? So now we're gonna go back to the next marker point that we created, so right here. And we're gonna tab back one frame and we're gonna press the keyframe. This is gonna make sure that the purple is basically staying for that area where we put the purple keyframes. And then we're gonna tab over one keyframe and then change the color again. Let's go to like, I don't know, red, fun. And then we're just gonna keep doing the same thing. Yes, it really is that easy. <laughs> it's so much fun. So let's go back over here to the marker, tab back one frame, add a keyframe, tab over one frame. And let's change this to yellow, would that be cute? Or like a green? It'll change it to green because of the original color of the jacket. So we'll do that. And then let's just do the last one real quick. So right around here, we'll add one more keyframe. And then we'll tab over one frame and we're gonna change it back to that original color. So I'm gonna double press on this color and then just copy and paste in that hex code and we are good to go. So let's play this through. It's not so much fun. And of course you can match this up to the beat if you wanted to, you could add in like uh, sound effects for snapping. You could do like fun transitions with this effect too. So like, you know how on TikTok you can like point to your shirt or something and like the shirt changes colors. Instead of having to go out and buy like the rainbow <laughs> of shirts, you can just edit just like that, like point it and edit, you know what I mean? So many options for this, it's so much fun. So that pretty much wraps it up. It is now time for a Q and A. 
So we're going to be opening up the Q&A pod. Please let me know if you have any questions. And let's go through them. So um, what is the benefit of shooting at more frames per second? So basically, Lauren, this will allow you to have more footage, <laughs> like there are more frames per second. So if you want to go to slow down that footage, it will look seamless. It won't look choppy. If you take a clip shot at 24 frames per second and you slow it down, it'll look choppy. Like it'll just, it won't look right, basically. <laughs> you know what? Let me see if I can share. Let's go back into Premiere and let's actually try to slow this one down because I believe this was shot at 24 frames per second. So let's bring this down to 40 and let's play this. You see how it looks really choppy like that? Like it's not smooth. That's the benefit of shooting at like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. We'll have really smooth action. All right, let's go back. Um, do you have any advice on creating lifestyle content for a faceless brand? I work for a company that's more community and storytelling based. Hopefully that makes sense creating lifestyle content for a faceless brand. So basically like no models or anything like that, right? I am assuming that's what you mean. So you can do a lot of product shots. If you want, you can cre create uh, pictures with like hands in them. I find that that's a really nice way to include like a lifestyle thing. So let's say like we're gonna do a cup of tea, right? So we can have my hand holding this little mug and you can put up a backdrop, shoot this with like the sun facing it. And that's a nice like little lifestyle sort of shot. Um, yeah, basically just focusing on products. Hopefully that helped. <laughs> Is there a way to use a Mac emoji keyboard in Premiere Pro? You know, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done that, but you could copy and paste if you wanted to, I believe. Or you know what I do sometimes actually, I will go into Google and just type in like, smiley emoji png and then i'll save that to my computer and then drag and drop that into premiere and then that way you can like scale it and like move it around and all of that that's how i use emojis when i edit daniel asks where did you learn all of this did you have formal training at some point your language feels very precise in terms of click keys etc daniel thank you so much i i'm actually pretty much self-taught when it comes to editing but I will mention, I was actually part of the Adobe uh, Bootcamp last year, towards the end of last year. And basically it was a bootcamp that helps you learn Premiere Pro. Not gonna lie, Premiere Pro can be very intimidating, but it quickly made me very comfortable with it. I actually started editing in iMovie when I started my YouTube channel. And then from there, I actually did go into Premiere Pro. And then that was on my laptop. At some point, my laptop died. I got a Mac and then I went to Final Cut and now I'm back to Premiere. So just from experience, I would say I've learned a lot. Watching YouTube tutorials helps a lot. I do also have a playlist on my YouTube channel more geared towards beauty editing. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to check it out. Um, but yeah, for the most part, self-taught. <laughs> okay, next one. How do I delete Final Cut Pro effects? I don't use it anymore and I see them in my Premiere Pro effects. I actually haven't come across that, but I would imagine you can just go into like the folders, like in your computer, go into that folder and then just delete it from there. Not entirely sure though. Dominique asks, um, can you only change colors on Pro? For the change the color effect, yes, you can change the colors. Let's go back to here and I will show you. You can also change um, the hue and lightness if you wanted to. You could change the hue and saturation. You can also change the hue, lightness, and saturation. But for this effect, I find that it's more effective just at the hue. And you could also change all these different settings here. So like the uh, the hue tolerance, lightness tolerance, and saturation tolerance. So you'll see if I toggle these, it's basically changing the saturation amount or the uh, lightness amount or the hue even. 
So lots of options. Can you fade the color? Like instead of changing immediately, it would fade into the color. Yes, you can. So in order to do that, you can basically space out your keyframes instead of it being just one frame after the other, put maybe like, I don't know, five spaces in between it or just play around with it. But yes, you can definitely make it gradually change. Next question, even us. So what if multiple things are the same color? How do you only change a certain thing? So that actually goes back to our whole tolerance setting. So within the hue, lightness, and saturation, you can adjust those and it'll change that for you. So you'll see like here, like if I have it at 100, you can kind of see the leaves in the back are also turning red. But if we bring this down, let's do like, I don't know, 50, it's not gonna be as red and like the greenness in those leaves is still being preserved. So that is how you do that. Keegan asks, what is the best process for coming up with video ideas? I would say, think of what topics you want to be talking about and then make a list of literally anything and everything that comes to mind that you are interested in talking about. So from there, you can really just flesh out the video. So you can come up with bullet points, um, like what you want to talk about and then just expand from there. So, let me give you an example because I know that might not be helpful for you. It's just like so big. So for me, let's say I want to talk about beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and editing, right? So those are my topics. And then within beauty, let's say I want to do like product reviews, makeup tutorials. Um, I don't know, I'm blanking, but you get the point. So from there, let's say, okay, we want to do product review. Okay, what's hot? What's currently trending? Say hello to Lucky. <laughs> Um, and from there, you can just pull ideas and be like, okay, this eyeshadow palette just came out. Let's talk about this. What do we need to talk about? The formula, does it wear well? Um, the colors, the color story within the palette, something, things like that. So hopefully that helped you, Keegan. Serena says, can you, um, can you go over again about sounds? Like when uploading to TikTok and making sure that the trending sound will pop up on the bottom. Yes. So let me go back up here. So basically, when I go to upload this to TikTok, you know what? Do you want to do this live? I feel like that would be more helpful. Let me pull this up and I'll show you how I do this on TikTok. So let's go over here and let's go to TikTok. Want to learn? And then we will upload. We'll just do like a random video. I don't know. Let's do this. So we'll press next. So over here, we're going to go over to sounds. And then we're going to press volume and then add or up the original sound to 100. And then let's just pick like a random sound for this. Let's say this is the sound that we added it to. We're going to go over to volume and drag the added sound to zero. So now this way, when you go to upload your video, you will still see that um, the part right here at the bottom where it says like tasty carrots, for example, that will pop up. But what you're hearing is the audio from the video that you edited in Premiere Pro or Rush. Hopefully that helped. Next question. How do you change the coat to like multiple colors, but with one keyframe? Like if you wanted it to be a fast or rainbow strobe, gotcha. So what you can do is actually delete those keyframes. Like, you know how we did um, like blue and then purple keyframe, purple keyframe. What we can do is get rid of that purple keyframe because the reason for having like the starting and end points of the purple was so that it would remain a solid color. So let me zoom into this timeline right here and we'll get rid of those. So this is the purple one, we're going to delete that. So now you'll see if I play this back. It's kind of like gradually changing. Let me actually change this back to full speed so it's not choppy like that. Why did it disappear? 
it over here? There we go. You see how it's kind of like gradually fading? It's not going like color, color. It's blending into the next color. So that's how you would do that. Next question. How to be motivated to create different content? Motivation can be so tricky because I'll be honest, a lot of the times I'm not motivated to create either. Like it can be a whole production. Sometimes you really have to put together all this energy to set up lights and the camera and this and that. And you're just like, oh, I'm so over it before I even begin, right? So what you can do is batch shoot content. So you could just set one day or like a few days a week dedicated to filming and just create a shot list of everything that you want to do and just do it all in one day, get it over with. And then you can spend the next few days like editing all of that together. Michael asks, do you have any advice for how to start finding freelance work as an editor or videographer? So do you want to work for like YouTubers or just in general? If you want to work for YouTubers, you can follow them on socials and they will tend to tweet out like, oh, I'm looking for an editor or hiring an editor, apply here. And like, they'll put the link. That's how you can go about doing that. You can also reach out to them directly if you wanted to. Um, and for not YouTubers, basically same way, like keep up with them on socials, LinkedIn, they tend to post job listings there. And you can just reach out to these brands directly and ask them if they are hiring. Christine asked, do you recommend using Rush for short TikTok videos only and maybe keep YouTube linked videos on Pro? You can actually do both. You can totally film and edit YouTube videos on Rush if you want to. I tend to like Premiere Pro just for all the extra features it has. So like the masking and like fine tuning, things like that. That's why I like it for like YouTube linked videos. And it also allows me to stay organized on my external. So Ultimately, yes, I would say Rush, I generally do use for TikTok and Pro for YouTube, but you can totally do YouTube content on Rush as well. Next question, do you use any other Adobe products or are you mainly just Premiere and video editing? Oh, I use the whole spectrum of Adobe. I do Photoshop, Lightroom, Bridge, Spark, all of them. Like I, I love Adobe so much, it is so helpful. If you actually see the bottom of my uh, screen right here, I have Lightroom and Photoshop and Bridge already ready to go. I'm usually in these all the time. I also use After Effects, but that's a little bit more uh, advanced, but honestly, not that hard. Just jump into it. The interface looks a lot more scary than it is. You'll get a hang of it really quickly. Chase asks, can you change color in Rush? I don't believe so. And that is why I hopped into Premiere Pro. Um, and Premiere Pro has the option to change colors. Next question. Can you record with the sound at all, like on TikTok, or do you have to record separately and pair with extracted audio? Let me read that again. Can you record with the sound at all, like on TikTok? Oh, I see what you mean. Um, no, <laughs> you cannot. So what I tend to do is either have that audio playing while I'm uh, like filming, or I'll just kind of memorize it in my head and be like, okay, these are the beats at this point, like this is what I need to do. And then I'll just pair it with the extracted audio. Honestly, that method works so much better for me than doing it on TikTok. I feel like I'm a little bit like old school like that. I just, this makes more sense for me. <laughs> Daniel asks, at some point, would you give up editing? It feels like you have to do so much. Idea generation, shoot, edit, post, promote, interact with fans. What's the first thing you'd give up in that list or do you love the whole process? I live, breathe, function based off video, editing. Like I generally love it so much. And it's one of those things where when I do it, I'm not kidding you, time does not exist for me. Like I go into this major flow state and like, I just love every part of it. So I would not give it up. I, I love it. Next question, random. How'd you get that stylized calendar on your home screen? So this is actually a widget. It's on the uh, latest version of iOS, I believe is what you can do it on. It's called Widget Smith. Let me just pull this up so I can show you. 
So over here, like you see this little calendar, it's called Widget Smith. You can download that app and then you can get the calendar from that. How do you do it to where it doesn't fade? Like I just want to sharply change to a different color. So that's like that first version that I showed you. You're gonna put the stop and end points for that specific color. So like the keyframes, you're gonna start over here at, let me drag over, like purple, for example. And then you're gonna set one more keyframe right before you want it to the next color. You'll do purple, um, like right here. And then you'll change over to the next color. And if that doesn't make sense, please feel free to watch the playback. Um, when I went over it the first time, you can just rewatch that. It'll make sense. Just keep an eye out for that. And the playback link will be sent after this session. Serena asks, how do you send from Rush to Premiere Pro again? CC, I think you mentioned, and I guess when you are done editing on Premiere, do you download and then send to your phone to upload to TikTok? So to send from Rush to Premiere, I would save it on my phone and then just airdrop it and then pull it up in Premiere Pro. But if you want to pull it up from Rush on your phone to Rush on your desktop, you would just press that little check mark where it says sync with CC, and then you can open it on Rush on your computer. Um, and then when you're done editing on Premiere, do you download and then send to your phone to upload it? Yes, that is exactly what I do. So I'll just save it, airdrop it to myself, and upload to TikTok. Next question. How did you select that you wanted the coat to change colors and not your pants, for example? So you see this eyedropper tool right here. We're going to press that. Well, actually, let's double press the, um, this color box right here. And then you'll select the eyedropper tool, and then you'll select the color of just your coat. So since we selected this blue or teal, whatever you want to call this color, only that color will be affected. Since my pants are black, they're just going to remain untouched. All right, um, on the clone clip, how did you record the second clip without the last dress being on the bed? So that is where the masking came into play. So I added a layer mask right the second clip. So if I go over to mask and I'll press on this, you'll see we have box, right? So towards the end, right over here, I added keyframe to adjust the positioning of that mask. And that is basically going to allow that dress to come into the picture and look really smooth. I hope that helped. All right, so I believe that is our last, ooh, one more question. For changing the color, let's say you did black to change the color of your pants, but would your shoes change, would your shoes change also? All right. So let's say you did black and you want to change the color of your pants. Yeah, so basically anything that is that color will be affected. So just keep that in mind. You can mask this out too. In that same mask technique that I showed you for the outfit clone one, you can have like your pants affected. All right, I believe that is our final question. So if you guys would like to connect with me, please feel free to reach out at any time, ask me any questions. I am here for you, I'm rooting for you, and I cannot wait to see what you edit. You can find me on Instagram at Queen Shireen, TikTok at Queen Shireen with an extra N at the end, and then youtube.com slash Queen Shireen. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you for being here. Quick reminder, please make sure to fill out the survey. Emily did link it in the chat pod. So please, please, please go to the chat pod, fill it out. It's so helpful for us. And hopefully we can create more content like this for you very soon. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you all later. Bye.